Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. This is my first look video at Luminar Neo, what they are calling the media version. It is not a complete or final version of Luminar Neo. It is just what they're calling a media version, which is based on the new engine, which is running great as far as I uh, you know, can tell so far in all of my tests. And it also includes a lot of the tools slash filters that are coming over from Luminar AI. And of course, it includes the other tools for Neo that are new that you've already seen me demonstrate. Relight AI, the dust spot removal, and the power line removal. So it's not complete, it's not finished, it doesn't have all the other new tools. We'll get that in the future. But this is a good first look at kind of what Luminar Neo is shaping up to be. I wanna walk through that, give you some observations, some things to think about and to be aware of that sort of thing. Let's get into it. Um, on the left-hand side, you're seeing your catalog, unlike uh, in Luminar AI and Luminar 4 and all that, where you had everything on the right-hand side. So it's on the left-hand side. I should be clear, the user interface is not locked. Uh, I, you know, I said already that this is not a final product, but I also wanna point out that the UI or user interface is not locked. So some things may change. This is what we have today, but it's a good, I think, indication of where they're going and what they're doing with Neo. And um, you know, hopefully it gives you some idea of what's coming. So on the left-hand side, you have your catalog. At the bottom, you still have the little eye. So when you click on a photo like that one or this one, you can click on that eye and open it up. You can see it's a raw file, et cetera, et cetera. That's the same. That's all um, pretty basic stuff. Um, and across the top, you have catalog and edit. You don't see anything for templates or presets or export and all that because that's not in this version. So again, not complete, but I think you'll be happy with what you're seeing. Uh, I've got a photo here. If I want to edit it, of course, I just click on edit and you will see it opens up the editing menu on this right hand side. Now, some things are a little bit different. I'm going to talk about them and try to cover as much as I can. But if you have questions, don't hesitate to hit me up down below. And by the way, they also have their holiday sale on Luminar Neo, which you can find at the link below if you have not yet pre-ordered. So starting at the top, you have tools, which is all the, f the filter well, if you will. And you still have the four categories, but some things are a little bit differently uh, or done differently. I'll point that out. And then you've got history. That's new and different. Having history is not new, but the way it's done is different. I'm going to show you um, essentials, creative, portrait, and professional. You're going to look at professional and say, yeah, but where's optics, man? That's, that's kind of smaller. Well, here's what happened. So if you look at develop, it used to be called light. It's called develop now. If you have a raw file, it will say raw up there, okay? And by the way, crop AI used to be composition AI. It's now called crop AI, very similar in terms of how it works. But if you click on that, you will see that there's a whole lot in here in the develop module, which I'm personally very excited about. You do have camera profiles, but you've got a light section. So maybe you want to add a little bit of contrast, pull down the highlights, lift the shadows, you know, do, well, maybe not that much, do something like that. If I want to adjust the blacks and whites, I can do that there. I've got curves here as well, which I like. That's there. I love this color section being included. This is nice. You've got temperature, tint, saturation, vibrance, all right there. You've also got sharpness, noise reduction, and here's your optics module where you can fix distortion or do manual corrections, that sort of thing. So all of that is included here in the develop tool now, which I think is great because some of that used to be down below either in other sections, you know, a little further down or like the optics stuff was all the way at the bottom in professional. And so if you're working on your raw file in light in Luminar AI, you did a little bit there and then you had to go down and get optics. And those are the kind of things I always do first. I crop and straighten my photo first. I like to do optical corrections and I like to use kind of the developed, uh, what they're calling developed now, it used to be called light. That's kind of the order I like to go. All that's right there at the top now so i love that and then you can come in and do other things you know enhance ai whatever it might be i'm not doing a full edit here i just wanted to give you an idea of some of the things that are different about luminar neo so far now i've been going through a lot of these filters and looking at all of them they all seem to be operating fairly similarly to how they worked in luminar ai so i'm going to go ahead and bump up the color saturation i'm going to go into landscape and get a little golden hour and do that just trying to bop, you know, bump up the colors just because I like it. Um, they still have Color Harmony, which has all those great things and Super Contrast. Two of my tools, uh, favorite tools in Luminar AI are here 
thankfully, in Luminar Neo. So I'm very happy about that. You can see if you want to come down to Relight AI, it's right here. And I've been through that, especially in that video. I talked about it quite a bit. You can check that out. And of course, the advanced settings are down below as well. Now, here's the thing. One thing that they have said to us repeatedly about Luminar Neo is, hey, guess what? You're going to be able to use a tool multiple times. What if you want to do one color thing here and mask it in and a different color thing there and mask it in? We only have one color tool. And remember, I use the color tool. Hey, but look, it's back at zero. What's that all about, Jim? Well, if you go over here to history, you can see here are the tools on the history tab that I've used. I used Develop Raw. I used Enhance AI, right, for the uh, Accent AI, which is there. By the way, you'll notice as I clicked on, like, uh, when I click down here, the ones above it automatically turn off. So if you want all of them in the history to be showing, you'd have to be in the top filter. But you can, of course, reset or go back in and further refine that. Or if I wanted to go to color again, I can go back to tool, click on here, and I've got color. So then I could come in and say, oh, you know what I want to do? I, want to, I actually want a little bit more vibrance, but I want to remove a color cast. You know, I'm just kind of winging it here, making it up. I don't have a plan for the photo. But as soon as you close the tool, it's basically saying, okay, that's your, you know, you're committed to that you know, committed, um, but it shows up in the history. Here's color again, where I did a little bit more vibrance and color cast, but down here, here's my original use of color where I bumped up saturation and vibrance. So you can always reset these to zero to get rid of that and go back up here and do something different if you need to. So that's how they're implementing the ability to use um, the same tool multiple times. Now, let's say I've edited that. I want to move along and I want to show you some of the things that you can do in terms of how well Luminar is performing for me. So let's say I want to come in here and do some of these things. I'm making this up. I don't have a plan for any um, of this photo here. I am just kind of bump you know, kind of bopping around and just doing some things. And all I'm trying to do really is just move quick and uh, see if I can break things for lack of a better word. So I'm going to go in here to edit. This one needs to be straightened. I'm going to go ahead and hit alignment and that didn't really quite get it. You know, remember this is a still a demo version. I'm going to get some accent AI. I'm going to maybe get a little bit of structure and I'm going to get a little bit of vibrance as well. Actually, I'm going to go back up here to develop. And what I want to do is maybe take that temperature down a little bit. So maybe something like that, maybe a little bit of a tint. I'm just kind of playing, again, just winging it. Don't have a particular plan for any of these photos. What I'm trying to do is show you how well this app is performing in terms of speed, because I find that it's moving pretty darn quickly. I'm going to go ahead and bump up the contrast. I need to lighten the shadows, take care of the highlights. I'm going to give it a little bit of warmth, a little bit of saturation and vibrance. You know, let's pretend I'm happy with that photo. I'm going to move on. I'm going to go get this photo. I'm going to click edit. It's a raw file. I'm going to come over here and do a little bit. I need to take the exposure down, bump up the contrast, maybe lift the shadows a little bit, maybe a little bit of temperature and tint work, a little bit of saturation and vibrance. You know, let's say I like that. Actually, you know what? I'm, I'm going to bump up the shadows a little bit. I'm going to go out of here. I'm going to get Accent AI, and I'm going to move that up a little bit. You know, hey, let's say I'm done with that photo. I'm going on to another photo. I'm going to go ahead and click Edit. I'm going to pop over here, start editing this one. This is a JPEG. Otherwise, it would have said Raw. I'm going to add some contrast, take down the highlights. You get it. You saw me, I don't know how many photos that was, but if you're thinking about how long it takes you to load and edit and do some simple edits in Luminar AI or in Luminar 4, I think that you will definitely agree with me that the performance in Luminar Neo is very fast. I find myself being able to just kind of go trucking through photos as quickly as I'm doing here, and I'm not having any crashes or any issues, anything like that. I'm literally just moving through photos. Now, to be clear, I'm not here advocating that you hurry up and edit photos. I'm a guy that loves to edit photos. I make videos about it, as you obviously would know if you're here on my channel. So I love to take my time and do what I want. But what I do want to do is make sure that everything is moving quickly when I'm editing. So I can move a slider and get a real-time adjustment, move another one, move on, maybe go back. I, I may edit quickly within a photo, but I'm not always bouncing photo to photo to photo. But what I wanted to show you was even editing quickly within a photo and then bouncing to other photos, you can quickly churn through these. This new engine is very fast. 
That's what Luminar Neo is based on. That's one of the main things I'm super excited about is that we're gonna have so much power and performance with this new engine underneath it. I'm excited about that and I hope you are as well. Having said that, that's really what I wanted to walk through, basically demoing the new engine and the performance behind it, showing you the lineup of the filters and things like that on this right-hand side for whenever you're editing your photos. I wanted to talk about the history and how that works and how you can go back and forth and use you know, the same tool or filter again and again. You just have to go to history to change or remove previous versions of it or previous uses of it. And I'll come back and do more videos about this. Mostly, I just wanted to let you know that Neo's getting closer. It's looking really good. It's very stable and fast. I'm very excited about it, and I'll continue to share more information about it. And of course, whenever we get an update with additional tools, the new stuff that's coming, I'll share that as well. If you haven't yet subscribed, do that down below. I'll see you soon, my friends. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And until next time, adios.